What's up, Outriders? Amber here, back with another Devastator build guide. This one is an Endgame Expeditions build. If you've seen my previous budget build, you know I started going for a firepower build. That's how I wanted to build my Devastator. And I conquered World Tier 15 and Expeditions Tier 10, but then I hit a wall. But I finally figured out a way to break through Challenge Tier 11 and beyond and in this video, I'll show you the strategy I used. So I've used both the top and bottom skill trees, and I haven't seen this anywhere else online. So do subscribe to my channel if you want more original Outriders content you won't find any place else. So I'm combining the Vanquisher and Seismic Shifter. From the Vanquisher skill tree, the Armor Breaker, nodes are key to get armor piercing. I've got two of those to increase my armor piercing by 20% and then taking Assault Master to get a 20% bonus on my assault weapon damage and also increase the drop chance of getting assault weapons. So it increases your chance of getting weapons like Thunderbird and the Amber Vault and other assault weapons. I did not take the cooldown nodes because I'm getting cooldown reduction from the attributes on my armor, as we'll see in a minute. And then in the bottom skill tree, I'm going for skilled century to increase my armor and resistance when my skills end. So this is gonna help give me sustainability, survivability, and also protected by the anomaly so these two nodes are gonna give me additional armor, and then I'm getting additional anomaly power from the minor nodes throughout this tree, as well as additional resistance piercing, which is gonna help against elites. Now, I'm not taking any of the blood nodes. This is not a bleed build. So we're going to the bottom to get armor, but we're not taking Earth's Heritage, we're not taking either of the capstone nodes. If I had more skill points, I would, but we don't have enough points to get both of the capstone nodes. So we're just going almost to the end, but not quite. So we're getting firepower and anomaly power combining together. And we're taking one skill from each of the three areas, Earthquake from Seismic, Reflect Bullets, from protection and gravity leap from kinetic. So earthquake we're using to deal damage, interrupt enemies, and the key to this build as you will see in the gameplay is keep the enemies in front of you because earthquake works on enemies in front of you as does reflect bullets. So reflect bullets makes a barrier in front of you and we're gonna use the auto reflect mod so that we can fight while reflect bullets is active. This also works against beasts and melee attacks. It reflects some of the melee attacks so it doesn't just work against bullets. And then gravity leap, this we're using as our healing mechanic. We're gonna have the life absorption mod so we can heal when we do damage with gravity leap and this is also great for mobility to get around the battlefield and get out of sticky situations. So let's look at the gear. Again, this is a budget build. We're using all purple gear, all epics for the weapon. I like the LMGs suppressing to have a huge clip size of 150. If you really prefer another weapon type, another assault weapon type like an AR, you could use that as well, but I really like the LMGs. And I've got Claymore and Storm Whip as my two tier two weapons mods. On the secondary weapon, I've got Claymore again and also Minefield. So I use this if there's a pack of enemies. Now, if you have the tier three mods for Minefield, if you have Legendary Minefield, or if you have the tier three mod for the Ultimate Storm Whip, you can equip those. That'll help do even more damage. The other important thing is armor pierce. 
you need armor pierce on your weapons. And for the pistol, I just have the same mods as my primary weapon. This is sort of a backup <laughs> if I run out of ammo. That's the only time I use my pistol. So armor piercing is really important because that'll help you deal with elites. Unfortunately, Devastator doesn't have anomaly rounds. Anomaly rounds bypass armor, so we need to have armor piercing on our weapons. Now for the headgear, I've got the strongest first to deal more damage with reflect bullets. I also have phantom dash for mobility because as I said, it's really important to keep the enemies in front of you. So this is gonna help me reposition myself and also escape <laughs> if I get cornered. But if you have another mod that you like, you could use it instead of phantom dash, but that's, that's really one that I like. For the chest, we've got extra quake to give us an additional earthquake and human comet to give us additional damage on gravity leap. So human comet is important because we want more damage on gravity leap because that'll give us more healing through life absorption. So the combination of human comet and life absorption allows us to heal ourselves using gravity leap. And then on the pants, we've got auto reflect. That's mandatory, so you can fight while reflect bullets is active. And then hollow point. The reflected bullets apply vulnerability status. This is also really critical. You can swap this out for bleed if you really want bleed damage, but I find applying vulnerability is even more useful because it makes you deal a lot more damage to the enemies that are caught in your reflect bullets. On the gloves, we've got ground crush to do more damage with earthquake and then damage absorber to increase armor and resistance. So this increases our armor considerably. But if there's another mod you prefer, like mitigation from death, you could swap that in. This is just a framework and feel free to substitute in other mods or if you have some tier three armor mods, you can put those in as well. And then finally for the boots, life absorption to allow us to heal ourselves. And then finally emergency stance, which will give us golem when we're low on health. So we're not using golem as one of our skills, but we'll get it if we drop below 30% health for a few seconds. And besides the protection of emergency stance when it's triggered, it's also a visual indicator that I'm about to die. So if I see myself go into golem mode from emergency stance, I know I have to pop gravity leap and get out of there, get someplace safe. Or if my gravity leap is on cooldown, I've got to try to kill an enemy ASAP, either through using earthquake or a close range kill because that's how Devastators heal, is by those close range kills. And some final gameplay. And here I'm taking out two elites in Chem Plant Tier 12. This is Amber. Subscribe to my channel for more guides and gameplay for Outriders.